G'day, I'm Jamie from the Lucky Fig Farm, and this episode is about the native tree revegetation we've undertaken at the homestead. So I live in the southwest of Western Australia, just outside the Perth metropolitan area, which is a temperate Mediterranean zone, plant hardiness zone 11. So we get very hot, long dry summers with cool wet winters. So we purchased this land about seven years ago, back in 2015, with the intention of building our forever home and raising our young family. The land is two hectares in size, which is about five acres. Most of it's cleared paddock, but there's some remnant forest, which is located behind me. But all that's left is only about an acre of that. So the whole area was divided up into acreages and sold, but prior to that it was used for farming. So over a hundred years ago, Europeans cleared the land for farming, for the raising of cattle and sheep, putting in orchards and, using, and growing cereal crops. But prior to that, the whole area was forested. And in fact, the Aboriginal Australians lived here for tens of thousands of years without disturbing the land, living in harmony with it, where there was a strong biodiversity. So our intention had always been to revegetating the land to the way it used to be, but whilst also maintaining a balance with what we need on our homestead, with putting in our orchard, our vegetable garden, having space to be, and also maintaining a safe distance from the forest for the bushfire risks that exist. So during the first six years when we weren't living here, uh, we couldn't visit very often, but we started to establish the trees. So each year we started putting in more. And during this time, we've put in at least about 200 native trees, shrubs and ground covers, um, just building on the forested area, maintaining a distance from our home. And it was about one year ago that our home was finished and that we moved in, but we're continuing to put in some native trees, filling in spaces as we can, just trying to really improve the biodiversity for the area. So the home was constructed at the rear of the property, up on the hill so that we could overlook the forested valley. We needed space for the home, the water tank, large shed, septic system, and we've also got the orchard that's gone in and veggie garden, and the chooks down the front. But what we've done, uh, making sure that we maintain a safe distance of planting large trees because of the bushfire risk, we've just re-vegetated uh, the forested area down here. So the land on the other side of the valley is still forested. This is what the whole area looked like. The only reason that still has trees is because it's too steep for farming, otherwise that would have gone the same way with the land clearing. So this is how all of our plantings have started with uh, seedling tube stock. Doing it this way is the most efficient and cost effective way of getting the plants going. Because the plants are so young, they don't have root binding in the pots. Once you get them through the first summer for a bit extra watering and the roots find their own water, they just take off and grow better than if you'd bought them in a larger pot. This little one here is a jarra. Just like the group of three behind me, which are about three years old. This section here was the first to be revegetated. This is about six years ago. There was nothing here before this. It was just bare with a gravel road going through, which I leveled out and started the replanting. So it was all an experiment at first. Didn't quite get the drainage right. And also we found that the kangaroos were coming in at night and eating the trees. So we had set up irrigation for when we were away. And set up a fence to keep the kangaroos out and started to have a bit more success. So I had three of these ones planted. This is Silver Princess. You can see how tall it is now from where it started, only a few inches in size. And I planted two rows of the main hardwood forest that we have here. This one here is the Mary. This was in fact the very first tree that I planted here. And the row of Marys continues on the outside. through to here and they get smaller as they get closer to the established forest because they really need sun to grow and just on the inside of it we've got the jarrah tree small one again because he's closer to the established forest in their shade and they get bigger as they go away and get more sunlight 
So this is how quick this has grown in six years. This Jarrah tree here is obviously one of the established ones. It's here before we moved in. This is one of the main uh, forested trees through this area, the Jarrah and the Murray. So this Jarrah is an extremely good hardwood. It's been used ever since Europeans settled it uh, for everything from railway sleepers to flooring boards to cabinet making. And it's the most popular wood here for firewood. However, it's recently been banned from harvesting completely for the first time in our state, which is fantastic for the forest. <coughs> so this area here is what we revegetated in the second year. So five to six years ago now, there's already established Murray and Jarrah in here. So I just tried to fill in some spaces and throughout all of my established forested area, I've undercut the trees to about six foot high as a preventative for bushfire. So what I've gone and done is planted clusters of uh, Jarrah in groups of three and also lined some of these edges with the Murray. Where there's been sun, they've taken off better so this is a group of three here, five or six years old. Another group of three. And where there's been more sun, these three have taken off much better. So this jar is just coming into its flowering now, towards the end of winter. You can see the bees love it. So we're establishing a fireplace picnic area here with some trees around it. Just as a centerpiece of that, I've planted three salmon gum. So all of these hardwood are a slow growing tree, but these salmon gum, particularly slow growing, these have been in for the same period as, as this section, five or six years. And just lining the driveway here. I've planted the Murray. And just coming into the next section, this area was already well established. I couldn't fit any more in here. But you can see where I've got the giants on my property. These are the tall Murray. These trees are particularly special for this area. When they get to a certain old age, they can establish hollows inside the tree, which are quite critical for birds in this area, in particular the uh, endangered carnaby cockatoo visits this area. So these trees are a very important habitat for the wildlife. This section here was the last area to be revegetated. This was about four years ago. Already had some established Murray trees. I just undercut those to allow some more sun through for the younger plants. Again, I've put in groups of Jarrah. This tree here was a volunteer. I don't know its species, but it grows wild here. That's how the young Jarrah are going. Over here I've got two more salmon gum and another group of three silver princess. So whilst I've planted mostly Jarrah and Murray to fit in with what was here before, I've also considered that I want flowering all throughout the year just to help bring birds and bees in all over the year. So I've actually specifically picked out trees that flower at different times of the year so I've got a few individual species spread out through here. So I hope you've loved my trees as much as I do. I really appreciate you watching this. 